Skunktronics here, and this is an escape room I made in Game Builder Garage for Nintendo Switch. In this video, I'll be explaining the process I went through to develop this game, which has blown minds at least once. My mind is blown! How did you program that? If you'd like to see a tutorial for anything behind the scenes in this game, please let me know in the comments. There have been a few revisions as I learned how people experienced it, but in this video I'll mostly focus on the final release. If you have Game Builder Garage and you'd like to try this game before I spoil it, the code is in the description. The solution is randomized. As soon as the game starts, while the player is looking at the code display, each of the clues around the room are given a single digit value from 1 to 9. For the red clue, the position of the mark on the curtains is what's important. However, I noticed that some players were interpreting that as 1 since there's only one mark. Some would even guess that it meant 8. In spoiler mode, the mark becomes a brighter color, and some right-facing arrows appear on the curtain rod. The yellow clue is the easiest, as it's just the number of the channel that the TV is on. I don't think this clue was ever misunderstood. In spoiler mode, an image appears on the TV screen that points to the channel number. The green clue is the one that seemed to cause the most confusion. It's related to the vending machine, which is green, and the position of the light that's off is what indicates the number. Like the red clue, some players were also interpreting this one as 1, or sometimes 8, but the right way to solve this clue is to count from the bottom. This is hinted at in spoiler mode, which adds arrows to the graphic on the front and makes the light flash. The blue clue is the number of cloud-covered flyers on the shelves. This was also occasionally misinterpreted, as some players wondered if it was a reference to how many were missing. This clue becomes more obvious in spoiler mode by changing the color of all the blocks on the shelves. Our robot friend also has some information to share on his computer screen. When you first start, this screen will say x equals 1 to 9 in each of the four colors. This is meant to convey that each digit of the code is a number from 1 to 9. In spoiler mode, some extra symbols will appear which are references to the way you read the clue for that color. The red arrow points right, the yellow clue is a ch, the green arrow points up, and the blue dots are in a 3x3 grid like the flyers on the shelves. This next change was made late in development, and it's also part of spoiler mode. Since a big part of the puzzle is based on color, I decided to add indicators on each of the buttons to indicate which digit it changes when pressed. These indicators also appear on each of the clues when in spoiler mode. I added this for two reasons. One, players who were colorblind. And two, the fact that the player frequently faces away from the code display while using the green and blue buttons. Feedback is very important to me, especially if I can see it happen live, so I decided pretty early on that I should change the buttons on the vending machine. Originally I had the buttons as different colors, which was intended to be a reference to how drinks are typically stocked in a machine like that. Unfortunately, the extra colors were causing way too much confusion, as players were frequently counting some of those buttons along with the other clues. So I decided to make this a lot less distracting by making all the buttons white. One last thing. In response to a comment by Dom from the Video Dojo channel, the vending machine does actually work in the final version. Thanks for watching, and be the reason for a smile. 